What's going on guys? Vic VB back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we have the Curve V2. This is the second rendition with casters, two player, 32 inch, Pandora's box, 10,000 games, arcade build. It's on casters. Let's take a look. Marvel versus Capcom. All right, you know the drill. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, the link tree link down below. I'm a broken record, I know. But what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me on all the socials. You would see everything. The garage opened up because I put all the pinball machines that way to the rear as they are getting all modified and LED'd out. But we're not talking about pinball on this one. We're bringing it back. We're talking about a 10,000 games Pandora's box 18S Pro 32 inch The Curve V2. This is a second rendition that GRS has made. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on it. Go follow, I forgot to end that. <laughs> Go follow. <laughs> I gotta be careful because I have the pinball glass over there, but check this out real quick. Again, on casters, it's not too bad. It looks like GRS has either watched a couple of videos. Uh, I was talking to Joel Retro Lizard about it. Uh, he said that they, it looks like they took some suggestions that people had and concerns. And uh, honestly, pretty solid can't lie to you um again i had another one i've i've done the other curve v1 that didn't have caster options um and i did make a couple of points uh that they should fix and it looks like they fixed it also be sure to like subscribe and comment down below let me know what you think about this v2 curve and also let me know about my mic quality i bought a new microphone specifically for these videos because i just wasn't a fan of my old bike but yes be sure to like comment and subscribe i forgot to put that into the intro where's my head at today <laughs> things have been going great recently i mean again i got pinball i'm working on erox build but this right here this is kind of a quick sale again i'm on facebook marketplace i have my ads and such I have basically two different style of customers, I would say. Uh, I have people that need the cabinet right now. I need it right now. I don't want to wait. What do you have in stock? I never have stock. I tell that to everybody because everybody wants custom artwork and custom theming and all that. But this right here is awesome. The Pandora box and again, using GRS, it just makes things fast and convenient. This right here hit about two weeks from deposit received to what you see here. It took about two weeks to complete. So if you ever need something quick and easy, I always recommend a build like this. Keep in mind also, it is a Pandora box system. So it's not a PC-based system. I don't have to configure emulators. This is basically said and done. I just shot the five minute credit video on this and uh, I've been dealing with this Pandora box. I only deal with this specific version. Again, it's the 18S Pro. I, you know, there's pros and cons to every system. My biggest thing, I get people, they go, hey Vic, I want something that's super easy, super user friendly. I just wanna plug it in and let my kids kind of play with it. I always will forever recommend a Pandora's box. Yes, there are several cons, there are several duplicates. Somebody complained one time, not about my system, but oh, I had a Pandora box before and it like lagged. Uh, I don't really experience that. I did ask if he kept the original control panel, like the original stock buttons and joysticks. Maybe that you'll experience lag because those controls are ass. Um, again, a lot of like up in the air opinions. I'm always the type where if you want something easy, user friendly, you want to just plug it in and go and not have to worry about confusion, a Pandora box build is the way to go. It's got its cons though. Many people want to play current gen games. I want to play Street Fighter 6. I want to play Tekken 8. Can it handle this? No. I've said it many times, I do have a buyer's guide video on a Pandora box. That buyer's guide video, I think it's about a year and a half old, it still applies. I'm still using the same Pandora's box. Don't fall for the gimmick of 30,000 games Pandora box. I made a review of that as well. Just don't fall for it. What are you guys doing? Again, Pandora box, keep it simple. It's a great way to relive classics, 
nostalgia. This 18S Pro, it's got PSP on it, PS1, N64, but you know, really you should be focusing on the classic arcade. So Final Burn Alpha and Mame Arcade. Metal Slug, Pac-Man, Galaga. NFL Blitz is a very big request amongst people. It does have the N64 version of it, but if you wanted four player NFL Blitz or even four player NBA Jam, you will need a PC based system. I will always suggest that. So, you know, it's up to you on how you wanna go about it. But also keep in mind, PC-based systems, it jacks up the price. I wanna talk about the cabinet right now. The cabinet actually, again, GRS, this is the curve. I was actually surprised to see all of the new, like, stuff that they added. Uh, I saw an option as I was checking out, it, it gave the option for casters, and I was like, whoa. Casters, I've never, I've never seen that. Um, so it was pretty cool. I sent them an email. I believe Tina answered the email and I said, hey, I see you guys have casters. Is your like base gonna support it though? And she said, yeah, it's a whole complete redesign. Um, I'm gonna show you the inside of it. Basically they have now six metal L brackets at the base to avoid blowout, which honestly, it makes sense. Um, as far as my personal builds, when I cut wood, I use um, the one by two pieces of wood and that way like the whole base can't really fall out. Um, another big thing that I did notice was they added basically more supports. That was really what was needed. Again, on the first V1 that I made, when I tilted the cabinet back, this whole thing like would separate. So they added more supports and there is a, I would probably say it's like a three by three square block that's on the side panels. Another cool thing, I mean really that's the only add-on was the casters. And another cool thing, they thought of LEDs um, as a thing. Basically like they have notch outs so you could run LED strips. So maybe they saw my videos, I don't know. But that was pretty cool to see because I saw it in the base and I also saw it in the control panel base. There's like these two very small rectangle openings. I'm like, what is that for? And then I put two and two together. I was like, oh, it's for LEDs. So I'm gonna go in handheld mode real quick. We're gonna open up the control panel. And just to show you right there, you can see there, there's that little rectangle cutout meant for LEDs. Now I use my Z313s uh, and uh, I had to still notch out for the actual volume rocker switch there. Uh, again, no, that's just kind of me. I could have possibly, no, I have to notch it out because the volume controller is just, you know, it's one long wire, so you can't really use that. But again, it's pretty cool, nice and clean, some LED cutouts that they thought of. Same thing goes for the bottom, let's open up the rear. Off the bat, they have these now, these kind of unscrew things for these panels. Kind of smart, it lightens the load. This right here is half inch wood, it's just a wood panel, but then they kept the door at three quarters. So that's pretty cool, that's still kind of hefty. Uh, we can see a couple things here. You can see there the L brackets, so that's the metal brackets, that's kind of preventing the base from blowing out. So again, there's four and then two on the edges here, make it six. Uh, again, right here you can see they have an LED cutout. So I utilized basically just one slot and went around the entire base. I don't have a picture of this now, but the only flaw I saw so far, the wheels were rubbing against this three quarter inch panel. So I had to actually shave it down. So that was my only one thing. Again, this wheel as it spins, it rubbed up against this. So I, I had to Dremel out a groove. I can't really get a picture of it. Um, but yes, that was the only like negative. I'll let them know as this wheel spins, it actually couldn't spin because the three quarter inch piece was blocking it. So luckily I realized that as I was putting the casters on. Other than that, solid. Let me open up real quick. Can we see? Got the rear of the cabinet open. Just wanna show you these right here. So again, three by three or four by four blocks were added for additional support. Definitely much better. As you can see here, you almost can't even see the line on Ryu. The old version, V1, this would move slightly versus the bottom panel. So that little block, definitely much needed. 
Now, the one last thing I noticed that they don't, they didn't have it on their website. Again, look at that, like convenient, just casters. Uh, I, like I said, when I build my custom cabs, I always have casters. Again, some people might be questioning, hey Vic, why are you using GRS? Two player cabs, well there's two things. If you need an arcade cabinet on the low end, I don't like to, work, like to use the word cheap, but if you have a certain budget, GRS is immediately that. I also don't do enclosed arcade cabinets. This right here is an enclosed cabinet. The monitor is enclosed by two pieces of wood with plexiglass. I don't do enclosed, I'd rather do my Bivic. I could do a Bivic 32 inch. Uh, I have a request for somebody that wants a 42 with two players. I could do that, but again, it, it, it raises the price. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, but it is what it is. I just try to help out. And uh, yeah, you could take a look at the cost of the cabinet and so forth. It's, it's really great, but the one thing I did notice from GRS is that they removed the option for like, custom cuts meaning like dedicated four-way i remember when i had the v1 i had to email them or put it in the notes that i wanted dedicated four-way they did do an additional charge for that in this situation here i didn't pay that i just wound up cutting it i have my fair share of woodworking and i'm able to cut and yes i had to cut through plexiglass so if you don't know how to cut through plexiglass you could screw that up but all in all if you're looking for an enclosed cabinet on the low, I've said it in the past. I've been doing this for years. I've been using these guys since I started before cutting wood. You can't, you can't go wrong with GRS. Uh, again, my ideas as far as that L bracket that's gonna prevent the blowing out, I could see it preventing it. Um, you know, kind of a tip for them, honestly. The way they had that four by four block on the sides, you guys already have the wood. You might as well make like a one by two long strip and go along each sidewall. It'll probably save you money so you don't have to buy the actual metal bracket. I would, that's probably my only suggestion. But other than that, this is solid. It's a thing of beauty. The only really two things that I, I kind of am questioning, it's a head scratcher. The plexiglass up here on the marquee, it's not long enough where it goes inside the wood. I don't know why they went that route. Um, they, they just have to honestly add like an additional inch. Um, and then as far as the actual plexiglass, I was actually surprised to see this. So the plexiglass here that's covering the monitor, they, they removed the grooves on the sides. They used to have grooves on the sides so that like the screen, the, the, the plexiglass would just not move. Um, they removed that. Uh, kind of a pro and con to that, if you ever have to fix or change the TV, there's three screws in the rear holding the plexi in place. You can kind of remove that, and then the whole plexiglass will slide out. So that's pretty cool. They also added two plastic L brackets right here to like keep the plexiglass in place. Previously, I just basically the plexiglass as far as the rear was being like right up against the TV. That's how I did it. Uh, but Solid stuff. Now again, this is a more cost affordable option if you are ordering from me. The one thing though, I kind of feel bad. Uh, I use this um, Insignia 32 inch TV. This TV is very important because if I power off the cabinet, and I don't like to power on right away, you should always give it a couple of seconds. But if I give power to the cabinet, the TV automatically turns on. Now, it's been years since I've been using this Insignia. Sadly, this Insignia is no longer available. We now have to go to a PC monitor. The price of this TV versus the PC monitor, you're looking at an additional 100 bucks. That's what it costs. So that's gonna be the one thing that I have to keep in mind. I'm gonna have to modify all my Facebook Marketplace ads. But again, you always, especially with an arcade cabinet, you wanna just kinda plug it in and let it turn on like an arcade cabinet should. And as you can see, like I said, the main thing that this customer wanted and many customers want, Vic, I'm working, my kiddo wants to play the arcade cabinet, what can we do? Right there, you can see it. I just turned it on, your kiddo could go ahead, play a game, you could even make your favorites list here. It's just a thing of beauty. You don't have to worry about if the kid unplugs it, you didn't shut down the PC, not like you're turning on a PC, waiting for the program to load. There's again, pros and cons to everything.
Again, I do have my convenient Z313 volume rocker right here. That's the best place to put it because it's kind of exposed and also you have your headphone jack here. So if you want to do some private gaming, it's all there. Let's talk about now the actual Pandora box itself. I, like I said, for what it is, I love this Pandora box. Again, I use the 18S Pro. You can find this on eBay. You could also DM me. I could always send you a link. I should probably make an affiliate link. Uh, it plays what it's gonna play. This one right here has PSP, which is always shocking. I feel like I always demonstrate that in these videos, but it's got several PSP games. I kind of want to just try to start a game that I've never played, but I also want to do it a game that's kind of arcade related, um, you know, meaning like it's mostly a fighting game and all that. This has the tennis. We could play some tennis, so why not? We'll see how that launches. But again, PSP emulation, not too bad. So we'll do this live. We'll see how this game is and how it plays out. The tennis, again, it's a PSP, so you kind of have to like figure like your X circle square triangle. Oh, net. It's actually pretty funny with my neighbor. Uh, we were actually playing bass. I think it was bass. Bass Hunter 64. So I was able to play some fishing on N64. I'm hitting the net. I'm not doing that good right now. But at least it's a game that, I mean, it's tennis. They have virtual tennis on arcade sticks, so... Nice spike, there you go, awesome, beautiful. Hold down player one start, press B to exit. Easy peasy. Now this here, I usually have this set to coin mode. On this one, I actually set it to free play. Couple of pros and cons, if you set it to free play, you have the option to load and save state on a couple of systems like the NES, the SNES, the Famicom, uh, even arcade games. Setting it to coin mode, it removes that option. So there's a pro and cons to anything, everything. The other thing I like about coin mode is that the menu will kind of just cycle as it goes, whereas now in free play, it's just gonna always continuously show this system. Very easy to kind of swap that. And again, another pro to this, it does have a marketplace. So I could open it up. I'll send this to the customer. Obviously I'll send instructions and all that. But there is a little nub button that you could press. You could go down, you're gonna enter your Wi-Fi, obviously, but you could enter the game market. This here, this Pandora box, previously it always came with Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Dreamcast. Keep in mind, it is the Dreamcast version. But the recent ones I've gotten, it didn't have that. I just now, and I never did it before, but I just put like the Wi-Fi in and I could go into the marketplace. This is actually pretty solid because it looks like they have new, like a new game chart. They're adding games. Uh, you know, it might not be arcade games. It looks like a couple of like Mega Drive. It even says the console here. So right now the new stuff is Mega Drive related, it looks like, but you could always, download more games. This is where I went in and I downloaded, uh, it was called Cartoon Hero versus Capcom 2. Um, it is what it is. Again, it is under the Dreamcast uh, list. But pretty cool, you could even go ahead, you could go by category, we could even look up some PSP games. There was like a Capcom Avengers game, something like that, that I downloaded on the PSP. This even has GTAs. <laughs> so if you want to do that, you could do that. Now also keep in mind, this Pandora box does have USB. You do have USB ports, so you could always add a controller. I never went to that extent because when you get to that, you might as well go and get like a PC version. Look at this, they even have WWE All-Stars. Assassin's Creed. Awesome, again, you have your marketplace there too, so you might be able to even go ahead and download a game. Simple, also in that nub menu, you could set your favorites. Last thing I forgot to show off, we might as well take a look at it in the dark. I'll turn off the garage lights. Take a look at it in the dark. And as you can see, with the casters, just like my Bivik cabinets, your actual bottom is glowing. In the rear, you know, you have a couple of slots open for the panel, so it does kind of glow in the rear. Again, you have your kick plate illumination, marquee up top, solid. Well guys, there you have it. Another 32 inch Pandora box, 10,000 games, two player arcade cabinet going out. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. Sheesh, love it.